I will present, the, as I told you yesterday, the spatiotemporal modules, let's say, framework. And I will show you some, how's the workflow for uh, temporal, for, to build time series in grass and process temporal data. And in between, <laughs> there will be also like a show of different uh, visualizations available, okay? Um, well, you can find the slides in that, in that web link and also the code there. So the idea is that we will, um, I will show you like the different steps so you have the code and you can also uh, reproduce, okay? And the same, whatever question that appears, please raise your hand if I can answer or maybe Marcus or Carol can assist a bit, okay? Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, my background is in biology. I'm a biologist, and then I did a PhD in biology. Uh, and then I switched a bit into remote sensing and GIS. Um, I did a master in remote sensing and GIS applications for emergencies, environmental emergencies, in the Argentinian Special Agency. And from that, I started to work a bit more with, or much more, with remote sensing. So I was before focused in the biological and ecological aspects, but only using remote sensing as tool and GIS as tool. And now I'm like in the other side and using remote sensing and GIS applied to especially public health issues and zoonotic uh, diseases. I work now just since one month and a half <laughs> in the Tropical Medicine Institute in um, near Iwasu Falls. I don't know if you have heard about it. So the place looks like that. <laughs> super, super tropical place <laughs> there in that location. Um, if you ever go, just please call me. <laughs> um, and well, and in, let's say, since I did this master, I started, um, I did an internship in Marcus um, lab. And from there, I started my uh, um, open source <laughs> career, kind of. Um, so I'm a phosphor G enthusiast and advocate. I try to promote uh, open source and open data like everywhere. I think that's the way to go. It's like the philosophy. I embraced the philosophy, and since one year or one year and a half, I was included in the grass dev team, so I have SVN access. <laughs> I can modify the code. Um, and I am also an OSGEO charter member since last year. So just a bit of context. There are the links to GitLab or Twitter and so on. So let's start with the topic that joined us today. We call this temporal grass, we call it T-grass, just as acronym. Um, and this has made of GrassGIS the first open source software including the temporal dimension, right? Uh, this is available since 2015 with Grass 7. Um, and it, it's, it, it enables us to easily handle like hundreds and thousands of maps because it's fully um, based on metadata. So the idea is um, we have a database and we just timestamp the maps. Yeah, so it's based on a snapshot, snapshot approach. So we timestamp maps or we assign temporal tags to maps and we register that in a database. And that becomes like a new object or type of data. And we can use that as input for modules. Okay, so we don't have to worry about uh, indices or selecting maps and so on to do the processing. So it, it um, makes it much faster. Hmm? <clears throat> okay, and this collection of timestamped maps, um, so snapshots, 
right, of the same variable, let's say NDVI, LST, um, I don't know, band one of Sentinel, band two of Sentinel, things like that. Um, we call them space-time space -time data sets, right? <clears throat> And now, we can have in these space-time data sets, we can have maps that have different temporal and different spatial extent, okay? And we can have um, interval times, okay, we will see later, but we can have uh, maps representing an interval of time or maps representing only uh, a moment, okay? Like point uh, time. And we can have um, smaller, larger maps, everything together in the same one, okay? Because then, um, with the G region that you saw before, for example, we just focused our analysis into one region, right? <clears throat> so, according to the type of data that we are working with, we have different, or we call uh, the space-time data sets differently. So for rasters, it will be space-time raster data set, or <laughs> uh, for raster 3D, that grass is also able to handle them, will be space-time 3D raster data set, and so on, so forth, for vector data sets, okay? So this temporal framework is able to deal with the same kind of data that classic, let's call, grass GIS is able to deal with. Now, some other grass notions. <clears throat> as I briefly mentioned before, the time can be defined as an interval, right? So it has a start and an end date, yeah? And it's defined like an open interval. So the end date will be the start date of the next one, okay? <clears throat> or time instances, like just a moment. Hmm? Yeah, it will be only, this, we call it only start time, okay? Then uh, time can be absolute of absolute type, like in the Gregorian calendar, okay? Uh, with a date and time until seconds, um, or relative, in which, for example, for simulations, you don't care about the date, but you care about like the, what it represents, okay? So it's, okay, I will simulate daily data or I will simulate every 10 days, right? So the time that we specify is like four years, 90 days and so on. <clears throat> and then granularity is another um, important concept this is the greatest common divisor of the temporal extents in a, a space-time data set. So if you have monthly data, the granularity will be one month. But for example, there's this uh, MODIS eight-day products. So these guys start every 1st of January and finish every 31st of December, okay? But then they start all over again. And the years have 300, 65 or 366 days, so we cannot have eight days like continuous, but we start all over again. So the last map of each year is either four or three days, right? So what's the common divisor of that? Then you get daily, okay? So the granularity of that time series will be daily, okay? Because you have different... Um, intervals, or maps represent different intervals. <clears throat> so here's what Marcus was saying about vectors, the grass is, um, vector format in grass is topological, so we also have topology in, temp uh, in the temporal framework, okay? And it, this uh, refers to the relationships of ta one time series with the next one, with the other, and also uh, in between maps of the different time series, okay? So then this allows to um, assess different types of relationships like equal, when the maps are exactly the same, represent exactly the same interval, or when they are a bit shifted for 
one way or the other, or when one contains the other, and so on. So then the temporal um, algebra and the temporal and different temporal modules will allow to perform like first checks between uh, different time series and to select like and to make um, alg algebraic operations according to these relationships. Okay. So it's not only like okay we put all a bunch of maps together and we do operate and we do operations with it, but it's also uh, topological operations and relationships among the time series. And these topological relationships then allow to do this temporal sampling, so it's like this comparing of maps, okay, of time series, <clears throat> and extraction of data or operations among time series, okay? So that's just to show um, an example of two time series, and you want to sample one with the other one, yes? And so you see which map you could see according to the relationships. <clears throat> but this is like also for further reference. <laughs> then, as in the general, in the classic graph, let's call it, modules are organized according to um, how you say, <laughs> to letters <laughs> and to what they do. So they all, families, yeah. um, so they all start with T, right? So T asterisks, so T list, T info, will be general modules for general utilities in the temporal framework. And then T rust will be all the modules uh, using Tempora, using space-time raster data set as inputs, okay, and so on with the rest. Mm -hmm. So it's, then it's easier to, if you are working with raster time series, then it's easier to search for the modules. <clears throat> okay, I spent like 12 hours making this plot, so <laughs> I will explain. <laughs> This is like, I wanted to create like an overview um, of the workflow and uh, how, can it be, how can it relate, how can you relate it with other modules as well, okay? So the thing is that this temporal database or this temporal framework does not duplicate data, is, it means that the maps are in the grass database that we saw already, like in this grass data folder. Okay, but then we only do, we create a temporal database in which we just put the names of the maps there. Okay, so we don't duplicate the data. Hmm? Um, okay, so the workflow would go like this. Um, we first create this temporal database, okay? So with T create, like general modules, only the T and the word. <laughs> um, that creates just an empty table, okay? An empty SQLite table. And then we assign timestamps to maps, and we say, okay, now write the names and some other metadata of these maps into this table, okay? And like that, we get this space-time raster 3D, raster data set, or vector data set, okay? And then we have like different like general utility modules, as I was telling you before, like T-list, T-info, to get information, to list the maps, to list the different uh, temp time series that we have, to remove time series. So all those operations we do with those general utility modules. Then we have some um, visualization modules. Uh, so to see different time series, we use GUI timeline to create um, time series plots of like a pixel, we use GUI T plot, GUI animation to create like uh, uh, videos <laughs> of maps. Um, and then once we created the time series, made some visualizations, we can just list all the maps inside them and list with different criteria, like, okay, list the maps uh, with the minimum, with the maximum, or where, 
I find these and that values and things like that. <clears throat> the same for vectors. So here is for rasters and this is for vectors. So this temporal framework is most developed, let's say, or is more, is richer for uh, raster uh, data than for vector. Um, but still there are quite some nice things uh, for the vector data sets, for the vector time series. And then there are some, we can do some uh, pre-processing, I call, like setting the colors for all the maps in the time series, which is like a wrapper of our colors that you saw before. <clears throat> do some gap filling. Um, we, so this one is like a linear interpolation, the rust gap fill. But then if you want, you could use other modules, for example, add-ons uh, that, um, that, does, that do, sorry, um, harmonic analysis of time series or local weighted regression, for example, if you want to uh, fill in the gaps. <clears throat> and the star of, of this temporal framework is the temporal um, aggregation, the temporal accumulation, and temporal algebra, especially. Um, so you can do really, really complicated uh, things with T-Rust algebra. Um, like, for example, <laughs> yesterday in the mailing list, someone asked, how do I count consecutive days in a week uh, that met certain criteria? So with T-Rust algebra, you can do that. So you create a weekly time series, like with uh, whatever value, zero. And then you compare this with your daily time series of temperature, for example. Okay. So every time you have, you compare the daily that is contained in the weekly, and then you set the if, <laughs> like, okay, if the temperature is higher than this, some, uh, add one. If it is lower, zero. And like that, you end up with a weekly time series that counts the consecutive days um, of the week with a certain criteria, okay? Because you also have like temporal sub-indexes. So you can go in the time series with the algebra moving with temporal indexes. So it's, it, you can create like really complex uh, sentences. And it's super cool. Um, there's also t vect algebra, but the developer that did that, when, when I asked him, like, oh, I want to use this one for this and that, no. <laughs> it's, like, it's very experimental, <laughs> okay. But at least it, it looks like very cool. Uh, and then just to interface with um, other software, like even R, you can ex uh, export the time series and then read them with R. Um, so there's no so far an, an equivalent R object for a time series in grass. Not directly. So you have to import, create a raster stack or a raster brick or something. Um, yeah, that's it. So that's like the general flow and we will, we will um, go through it, okay? <clears throat> Now, let's start. So everyone downloaded the North Carolina, not North Carolina data set and the Modis LST map set. Turn, 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 turn. Here, people. Okay, so you should have something like this. If you downloaded the data, you should have this location, okay, in your grass data folder. Is anyone there? Okay. You should have this location, and inside that location, you should have put this Modis LST. So there were two links in the GitHub. <clears throat> there. 
אוקיי? Can you see it? Okay. Well then, you download the location, okay, and you unzip in your RAS data, and then you download this one, and you unzip inside the North Carolina location, okay? So if that's done, I will assume that we start. I will mostly work and then, wait, 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 the code. Also the code is here so you can follow. This one, okay. Do you have it? No one answers. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so this is what I do usually. So in that modis lst file, yeah, there are three years of monthly data of uh, lst day, okay? <clears throat> so if you do glist rust there, you should see the list of all maps, yeah, of all raster maps. And it should look something like glist, rust, okay? Maybe not those, but you should see those. This, okay? And then you can ask for some information for one of the maps. To see what it says, you can see the resolution, you can see, <clears throat> let's do this. Oy, this looks ugly. Okay, so if you, this is very useful when one starts working with some data, our info, yeah, we can get information, basic info of the map, okay? So the name, the map set in which uh, it is, the location, yeah, the timestamp, what kind of data it is, how many rows and, and columns, the resolution, the extent, mean and max, okay? How was it imported? Hmm? So we have everything there. <clears throat> this was just to check that everyone had the maps and to check some info of the maps, okay? This is basic. Then what we do to start working, because we don't want to see like the full map, the full modis scene, we are only interested in North Carolina state, which is the sample data set for grass, and also Edser used North Carolina the other day. <laughs> um, so what we do is to set the region, the computational region that Marcus was telling you before. Okay, so we will just subset uh, our computational region, our processes, to the North Carolina state boundaries, okay? And that is done like that. Yeah. 
so with the vector, and we aligned it to the resolution of one of the maps, one of the raster maps, because we want everything to be like exactly coincident, right? And there we have the information of the region. So with this minus p for print, uh, here, we get all the information of the region. Yeah, so we get the projection, datum, ellipsoid, the extents, the resolution, and the rows, calls, and number of cells. Yeah. So this is basic when we start working. And then we set the mask. So with the region, we just subset it. But we also, the boundary of North Carolina has a certain shape, so we want that, we want only that. And then we set a mask for, with the vector of North Carolina. And then we should see this. If the, master, if the mask is applied, we should see this. Okay, just follow the code. If you downloaded the code, you can just copy uh, and paste in the terminal, right? Um, so I just only, so you can pay attention, let's say. Good. So that's general uh, procedure. Now we create a temporal uh, data set. So with all these maps, remember it's LST, uh, monthly LST, so we have one map, one map per month, um, from 2015 to till 2017, okay? So we use this command, T create, yeah? And as I was saying to you before, it creates this SQLite table in which we will put the maps, the names of the maps and some other method, metadata, okay? So we need to specify which type of maps we will use and which type of time it will be. So, <clears throat> like that. Yeah, T create, the type, it will be, since it's raster data, we put STRS, RDS, yeah, temporal type absolute, because we know that this uh, LST data is monthly, so it's like for each month it will start the first day of the month and finish the next day, of the, the last day of the month. We put a name to this space-time data set that we are creating, and then we add some info, like a title and a description. Okay. I will run this with you. Okay, um, I use minus minus one. Yeah, so it's there. And now we do the info. Ah, mine will be, okay. So the next thing is the next the next thing you do is ask for information. Once you run the t create command, this one, okay, you ask for uh, okay you ask for t list. So you see if it is created, and next you ask for information, and what you get is these kind of things. So it's, it says non, 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 because we haven't added any map yet. Okay. Now we will go to the next step in which we add maps to it. Okay, we assign time to all the maps and re register them there. <clears throat> Is anyone seen the T info output? Okay. So the next step then 
is the registration or a timestamp assign assignment. So what we need here is then the output of the previous command, which is the table, the empty table, okay? Here, a list of the maps that we want to put there, a start date, and if it is, um, and the increment, okay? And if it is interval data, we also use this minus i hmm, to indicate that it's not um, only time instance, but it's also an interval, okay? So the start date of, the end date of one of them will be the start date of the next one inside the time series. So, we do it like this. So for um, Linux or Unix systems, we can use these backticks. So we just pass one grass command inside the other one, okay? So with this, we can list all the raster maps uh, that follows this pattern and separate them by comma. And this will be like the input, the input list for T register. Okay, so we use the minus i because it's interval data. The input will be the table that we created just before. The list of maps and then the start date, which is January 1st of 2015. And the increment is one month. <clears throat> there are like different ways of registering map. We could also use um, a file to pass the list of maps, for example. And um, if it's not interval data, we, of course, omit the minus i and so on. So there's a wiki that you could check uh, for more examples. Because we can pass in this file, we can also pass the start and end time, okay? So then we don't need to specify start or increment or anything because we just give a list with start and end time. Hmm? <clears throat> if you are in a Windows uh, console, what you can do, because the bug ticks uh, do not work, so what you can do is just first create this list and save it uh, with output parameter in a text file and then you use just the text file. Instead of maps, you use file and you pass the, the text file, okay? So that's a quick solution. <clears throat> so let's do this. <clears throat> Oops. Ah, I missed the T. <laughs> Is there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I get all those warnings because I have the time series already created. Now. Okay, so now the t-info shows some info, really. Okay, so just before it was non, 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 remember? So now that we assign the timestamps, yeah, everything is updated, okay? So now we have the name in which map set, the creation date, uh, the start and end date, the granularity, remember that concept, uh, the type of, um, the temporal type, yeah, interval, the extent of the, of the maps, the spatial extent, hmm, the resolution, and then some uh, statistics, let's say, or metadata, okay? Like the minimum value, maximum, the number of maps, yeah? And again, the history. So everything that you then do to this time series, to this uh, space-time data set, will be recorded here, OK? 
okay? So if we then start doing, uh, modifying something, it will be recorded here, okay? So here I have the history. Like, it was created like this, and then we register all these maps. So we keep a registry of what we do with the time series. We can also do, um, we can also list the maps inside the time series or list them with uh, some criteria, like ordered by the minimum value, the maximum value, and so on. So uh, let me show you how it looks like. So trust list is the command. Do you see? Yeah. And we get, by default, something like this. Okay, so uh, we have the name of the map, the map set, and then start date and end date. Okay, so like this we are sure that everything is fine. So it's start 1st of January and the last date is uh, February 1st. But remember this is open, so it's the same date as here. Okay. But this can be changed and we can list maps inside time series with other criteria. For example, or let's see, for example, the, only the name, the mean and max values. Okay. So like this, we only get this general info. Okay, the name of the map and the mean and max. Now, why does it look so crazy numbers if it is temperature? Because that's the way MODIS uh, delivers the data, so it's Kelvin uh, by 50 or something. So then we need to transform that into Celsius, for example. So first we will have a look at uh, one of the visualization commands. So we will use this GUI timeline, and we just pass, um, we just feed it with the name of the, temp, uh, of the time, uh, time series, okay? So GUI timeline input and the time series, and we get something like this, okay? So the nice feature of this is then it shows you the granularity. Yeah, so this, I don't know if you can see them, but those rectangles there represent the granularity. So if you have different time series, you could plot them all together and compare. Okay, it's a very like basic visualization as to see the topology among time series and the relations. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, we will now then transform this uh, scaled LST into Celsius values of um, land surface temperature, okay, so to make it more, to have a better sense of the data. But now, but, and we will use this uh, TRUST algebra module, okay? So, as I was telling before, these uh, algebra modules are like really powerful and performs a wide range of temporal operations. Um, and it also takes into account the spatial topology as well. Um, and it combines like different, um, different uh, conditions. So you can set, uh, temporal conditions and spatial conditions as well. So you have temporal operations between time series like union intersection, temporal functions like, for example, where the start time is something or if start time something, uh, the start day of the year, there are like different uh, temporal functions that you can use. They are all listed in, in the manual. Um, then you have spatial operations like similar as in our map calc, 
that Marcus showed. Um, we can also use this uh, temporal neighborhood modifier, modifier or this kind of sub-index uh, in which we can, we can, because this is pixel-wise, pixel-based, right? So with this temporal neighborhood, we can assess like the pixel above, below, right, left, and also the pixel in like before in time or after in time, okay? Um, then there are other temporal functions like t-snap, which is to as, um, create intervals would be, uh, buffer or shift the time series, okay? And the thing is, it, it gets really complicated when you can combine all of them together. The syntax is a bit, ah, um, but it's really powerful. Then uh, now we will do something simple, but then if we have more time or if you are interested, I can show you some other uh, more complex uh, examples. So what we will do is just a simple operation, okay? So we use the command, we, this command will create a new time series, okay? So we have to give uh, names to the maps that will be the output of this command. So this is base name for, this is what base name is for. So I put LST day monthly Celsius. <laughs> uh, and then we just use as in our map calc an expression, okay? So this is the output raster time series. Yeah, this will be the name. And we only perform this operation, okay? So the other, the original time series, the LST day monthly uh, times 0.02 minus uh, 27315, and we transform this scale being uh, times 50 to Celsius, okay? So it's, it's actually really simple, but you see that you don't have to worry about selecting all the maps and searching them and all, because you just use the time series as an object, okay? <clears throat> so, I will do that. Okay, so we see how it calculates pretty fast. <clears throat> and now we can ask for some info. LSD day monthly Celsius. Okay. Yep. So you can check now, it's just created. <laughs> And you can check now that these values changed, okay? Yeah, so all the rest is the same. But we have a new time series now scaled to Celsius degrees, okay? And this is a new time series, we get a new history. <clears throat> okay. This is what we just did. <clears throat> the nice feature in upcoming graphs is that we will have this, which is a very nice feature, this suffix option, that um, if we set it to granularity, then in the names of the maps of the time series, we will get the, the date. So as it is now and you have run, if you run T Rust list, you will see that the maps end in 0, 0, or 0, 1, 0, 2, like that, just uh, an index. But now we will have this nice feature of uh, the suffix with the granularity. So then it's easier uh, to browse through the maps. Like Surin did that in the code sprint in Bonn. <laughs> 
Okay. So now let's see, for example, a time series plot of one of the pixels. So I, what I did is just pick the uh, a point, right, in the map, copy coordinates, and we will use this GUI T plot. Okay. And then we get something like this. See? So it's very nice to explore how the, how the time series look like, how the fluctuations in different areas look like. So you just um, pick, you can pick different coordinates interactively in the GUI, yes, and you see the time series. I can show you how to do that because this is nice. Uh, so let's say we can call the command, in Grass we can call the commands uh, from terminal, yes, and we get the, <clears throat> the command interface, right? So we don't need to really go into the GUI if we don't want. <clears throat> we pick here and then I will copy the coordinates from here or we open them up. Okay, draw, fine, right? So if you want to do it like more interactively, what you do is we will open the GUI, uh, GUI, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we display one map, just to have as reference. Uh, tuk, tuk, tuk. Okay. <clears throat> Close. We go to the temporal menu, there you can find all the, the modules, right? GUI tools, temporal plot tool, okay? And here we have, so now we will minimize this one. <clears throat> and we can pick from the map, okay? So if you click here in this one, sorry that it's there, oh, here. You can pick coordinates from the map. So you first choose the time series here. Yeah, monthly Celsius. And then we pick a coordinate in the map. Like, let's see how it looks like. Okay, then we change. Then we change again. Okay, so to explore, it's like really looks nice. Okay, so let's see the highest area. Okay, so that's pretty handy. <clears throat> so this we can, uh, yeah, maybe go faster. Um, this was just to show you the different ways of uh, listing and selection that are available. So with, we have this T list, which is like general, for general listing, you can list um, all the time series that you have in your map set, or also all the maps that are with, that are with timestamp, okay? And then you have this specific listing commands for raster time series or for vector time series, okay? And as I showed you before, it was like, um, we can get the mini, we can order them by minimum or maximum or make some selections. So this I will only show, you don't need to like go through them. But for example, um, I want to see only the maps that where the minimum is less or equal five, okay? And so I only get those maps, right? <clears throat> and the same, where the maximum is higher than 30. And I only get those maps, okay? So that's a very, uh, that's a quick way of, of 
exploring and sensing the data. Or we can also create this kind of uh, sen um, yeah, sentences with the time. So I only want to see this time period. Okay? And we can also combine them. So this time period and where the minimum is something. Okay? <clears throat> or where the month is January. Okay. So, as before, as Marcus already showed, there's also um, quick univariate statistics, univariate statistics for time series. So, it's actually like a wrapper for R dot univar. In this case, is T Rust univar, and you get like. Um, descriptive statistics for all the maps in the time series. Um, so you get start, end, date, and let me move this. Okay. Uh, then you get like the mean, standard deviation, and so on. Okay, for, but think that this is like the statistics for the whole map. Okay. If you want for different areas, you could mask differently, for example. Or you could change the region. So it's a quick way of showing uh, statistics. And you can also get, as in our Univar, extended statistics in which you get the percentiles and the quartiles and so on. Or you could save them into a text file and then import them in R or whatever other uh, software and make some plots, for example, with the statistics. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now this is again the nice part of of this temporal framework, the the temporal aggregations, and there are two main modules to do that. One is this one, the first that we will see, the Rust series, and it allows to aggregate a full time series with different methods. Yeah, so we could, if we have this monthly three years of LST, we want the mean LST of the period. So we use this one. Or we want the maximum or the minimum or, okay, different statistics methods available. Uh, or we can also aggregate a part of it. And then we use the where, um, the where parameter, and we select with dates. So only show me the media, the mean between this date and this date. Hmm? <clears throat> and it looks like that. The command looks like that. So here are series. So the input is the, the time series, the output another time series, and we select a method. Right? And that just creates a map okay, with the maximum. We do that for the maximum. We can do that for the minimum. Yeah. <clears throat> I will run that for you. Hey. Hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey. Input. That's wrong. Mm. I don't know. Ah, there's a space. Oh no. No. Let's do like this. <laughs> ah, it was good. Okay, so very quickly, let's show that. I needed to overwrite. So now, the same with the minimum. I can change it here. Okay. No, no, 
now it runs. Yes. Yes. Then we can set the colors, right? Okay. Ah, oh, I overwrite it, yes. <laughs> so let's run this one again. And now, minimum, and here we change it. Like that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now we set the colors. And to have a comparable scale, we can, in our colors, yeah, the command to set the, col the table color, we can uh, list different maps. So like that, uh, it will take the whole range, okay? And then the, the color palettes will be comparable. Okay. And now let's do some visualization of this. For that, um, I thought we could compare minimum and maximum temperature with elevation, for example. And for that, we will use this GUI map swipe that Tim mentioned the other day. <laughs> so I was like, ah, yes. <laughs> um, so it's very easy. From the command line, you can just call the module and first map, second map, just like that. Or <clears throat> we go to the GUI. Uh, ooh, where is it? <laughs> map swipe, so file, map swipe. We open it, <clears throat> and we have to select the map. Uh, let's go with minimum, and we choose also elevation. Okay. Hey, why is it not appearing? Ah, no, it's the small elevation map. It's the elevation state. Okay. So here we can, you see, but I don't have the mask applied. On this day, yes. No, and no. Beautiful. Okay, so like this, we can compare uh, our LST minimum in that period with elevation, for example. Okay, and the same with the maximum. And we can swipe, change the the mode. We can choose this mirror mode in which we point in one map and we also see that circle indicates the same position. Then there's an advanced mode if you want to change in which you can add not only raster maps but also vector maps and RGB combinations so for satellite images, uh, change the opacity levels and so on. Okay, but now let's move on. Okay, this was to show. Okay. okay. <clears throat> now we will do some temporal uh, operations using these temporal variables. Remember I told you in the, t in the algebra that there were temporal variables like start time, start date of, a, of the year, uh, start month, and so on. So we will use another module called TRust Map Calc. So it's like a wrapper for Map Calc in the classic grass, but with some other additions. Um, <clears throat> and it allows all these temporal variables. So we can use all these kind of temporal variables. And we also specify like an expression, okay, as in the, the algebra module. 
So what we will do, <clears throat> what we will do is to get which is the month of the maximum LST, okay? So for that, I, we use this model, we use the input of the monthly uh, Celsius uh, time series that we created, the output would be again a time series, okay, month of max LST, and then we set an expression, okay, so if the monthly LST is equal to the map to the map that we just created, the map with the maximum temperature, keep the start month. So keep the month, keep the number of the month. Otherwise, null. So what we will get there is a time series that will only have data, like numbers, where the, the month is equal, the maximum is equal the value is equal to that LST day max that we created. Okay, so we are comparing a time series, right, monthly values, with a map. A map that is an aggregation, yeah, that we only have the maximum value of, of the three years. So wherever in the time series, and pixel-wise, this value is equal to this value in the time series, we keep the, the month. Okay? And then, what we do, because then we have like a time series with a lot of nulls and values only in some places, okay? So then what we do is an aggregation of that in the way that we only keep, in this case, the earliest month, so we ask the minimum. Method minimum. You, I think you might be very lost, probably, but believe me that it really works like that. <laughs> and it's super powerful to be able to do these kind of things in thousands of months. Okay? <clears throat> uh, let me run this for you. Yes. Okay, so it's calculating. Good. We get, so it gives these messages because it creates a new time series, right? It first do the, the sampling, so it compares the relationship between a map and the time series, calculations, and then create the new time series with the output. <clears throat> now let's see uh, T info of that. Uh, input output. Okay, so we already have here, for example, the range of values. Okay, so the maximum of the time series occurred, occurred again uh, between <laughs> uh, April and September, the maximum temperature. <clears throat> now, let's run the aggregation of that. Okay, very good. And let's display that. Ah, it's here. easier here. So we can call monitor. Did you show it? No, you didn't show it. <laughs> okay, so we open a monitor. We can open monitors from the command line, not necessarily. If you don't use the GUI, you just, to visualize data and maps, you can just open a, a monitor from the command line. And the command to do that is dmon, and we call the monitors like this uh, wx01, so on, because it's WX Python, right? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Good. Now we display the map that we just created. Uh, and we use the Rust <laughs> for that. So display Rust, raster map, and the name of the map. And there we are, okay? So a rough visualization. And now this monitor also has the same uh, menu that the, that the main GUI. So for example, we could add a legend right here. So this map, apply. Okay, here we have a legend, but it has decimal points. We don't want that because it's month. So this is something like a bug apply, okay? We can resize the legend, something like this. Okay, so we can see in which month, so we can see spatially in which month in each place the maximum temperature of the whole period occurred, okay? <clears throat> if we go back here, yeah, no. so here I showed you like uh, step by step how to display from command, how to display a map in a monitor called from command line. So the daemon, as we saw before, then the the rust for the raster map, and you can keep adding like other maps or decorations. So for example, here I added the boundary of the states, and then I added a legend, and then the bar scale, and then the north arrow, and then some title, okay? And it looks like that, okay? So it's the same that we saw before, but in much more <laughs> detail and nicer. <clears throat> so, now we aggregate. So remember I told you there are like, there are two main commands for aggregation. So one was TRAST series that we used uh, that allows to aggregate the full time series. So now we will use another aggregation module, TRAST aggregate, that allows us to aggregate with granularity. So let's say we have a daily time series, but we want the monthly mean. Okay, so we just set granularity, yeah, to equal one month, and then we get like this, the monthly mean, okay? Well, or whatever method we want. Again, mean, uh, average, standard deviation, maximum, minimum, and several others, okay? And then also here, the where option uh, allows us to select different parts of the time series. Okay. So, command would look something like this. So we use the rest aggregate, then the input time series, the output, so we, we put names that mean something, so three months. <laughs> Uh, the base name for all the maps inside the time series. Here we have this nice suffix uh, option. So all the output maps within the time series will end with the granularity, with the date. So then it's easy, easier to browse. Then we select a method, in this case the average. Okay, so we want the, and we want the granularity of three months. Okay, so kind of seasonal. LST, seasonal mean LST. <clears throat> okay, let's run this. <clears throat> you see it's pretty fast. Now, Let's ask some info. Okay, so 
Before we have 36 maps, now we have 12 maps. The aggregation type here says average, okay? And we see the statistics. And here again, we see that its granularity is three months. Okay, so as always, this T-info allows us to quickly know what kind of data we have there and what is the range of values and the extent and so on. <clears throat> so now what we could do is, for example, plot this time series uh, and the monthly time series to compare granularities with the GUI timeline. Okay, just to see how it looks like. Let's call GUI timeline from here. Okay, so I call the module from the command line and we can just click on which time series we want. So, like that, we can see that the granularity, I don't know if you see, yeah. So this is like, it covers three months here, okay? So to compare time series is also a nice graphic tool. Good. And this is another way of, um, displaying maps. So there's a nice um, module called dframe as well. So from the display, we create frames. <clears throat> and we can see all the maps uh, in a plot, okay? So we first set the, the color table, and then we open a monitor, and we start filling the frames, okay? We create the frames. So in this case, I will only show 2015, so seasonal LST. Yeah, so each frame. And in each frame, I display the raster, the vector, and other text. Okay, and then it looks like this. For grass, that's a lot. <laughs> okay. So then you, you can also add in the commands, in the list of commands for each frame, you can add the legend and all that. But <clears throat> Okay, this we won't do. <laughs> now animations. So it's pretty easy to make animations uh, in grass. It's only like this. So we use that module, we use GUI animation, and we use as input the time series, and we, wait, we get a nice animation and a nice visualization of the spatial temporal changes. <clears throat> so then we can tweak it. So this one that I showed you, it's a bit more tweaked, but you can add like the timestamps you can add a title, you could add like also, um, for example, you have images, you want to add like a logo or something, you can also add like decorations, okay? <clears throat> and for the last part, um, this is to extract zonal statistics. So an, Something that we usually do is we have this raster data, but we want to extract information into vector points or vector polygons, for example. Okay? We want information from those rasters to then run models in R or something like that. Um, so I will show you how to do that for polygons. Okay? And it's, there's a nice add-on called B Struds <laughs> stats. So it's vector, raster time series, statistics, okay? <clears throat> 
First, we need to install that extension, that add-on, and we use the extension for that. Okay, so this is placed in a, a grass add-ons repo. Okay, so it fetches it from there. We install it, and then <clears throat> we run it. And we select the vector as input, okay, and the time series, the raster time series. And we want extra, we only, we will only extract these zonal statistics for this urban area, okay? So we can also use these uh, selections with the where parameter here. If we don't use it, we just get the zonal statistics for the whole vector map and done. Uh, and I'm saving it as a new vector, okay? And I select which method. So again, this zona statistics uh, provides different methods, so different stat uh, statistics like average, uh, standard deviation, and so on, and that's it. Okay, and let's see how it looks like. Oui. Again. Ah. Okay, writing attributes. So for each map in the time series, it's, com it's computing the zonal statistics of the area. Okay, done. And to see how it looks like, we can use BDB select. the map that we created, and there is it. So it looks kind of awful, but these are all the column names. So you see that it creates uh, the columns in the attribute table, and with the name of the time series, the granular, the date, the start date, and the method. Okay, so this would be the information for this polygon, the mean LST for January 2015. Okay. And then we can, again, export that into a CSV file or even connect to R and visualize the vector there. Like, I would personally do that. <laughs> because visualizations for uh, vector polygons is not very nicely implemented. Uh, so far, so yeah, you can just connect to R and import there. It would be something so simple as uh, R. Done, I have R inside the grass. Then you call library R, R grass seven. Okay. Um, test. Hey. Ah. Tuck. 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 Read. Read back, right? Yes. Uh. <coughs> the name. <coughs> so it's called. How is it called? This one. Okay. And driver. No? I think it worked. I think it worked like that, right? Yeah. Okay. So now I have a uh, test. Test. Here. Okay. So it creates an SP object. Okay and then we can plot it there. But don't ask me about <laughs> R, ask, you can ask it, say for example, <laughs> how to plot that. I guess, plot, just plot, just plot. Let's see if it works. There you have. And now, how do I assign color? SP plot. Um, library SP first, no? 
No. SP plot. Yes. Pass. Yeah, it wouldn't work. And? Yeah. So, cool. I haven't tried this before, so this is the first time. <laughs> cool. And that's the nice connection between graphs and R. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, so and now that we have simple features and there's a nice command to transform between SP and SF, so you can also do a like intermediate step and, step and convert to simple features object and then use all the other functionalities. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, good, now quit. Okay, nope. And I'm back in grass. And I think that's pretty much all. <laughs> yep. Okay. So do you have questions? I know it's like too much, but I'm sorry. <laughs> it was just a show of uh, functions. Yeah. I haven't used grass before. And when I wanted to came to this workshop, I completely omit that in my list, but I get so much interested uh, in this powerful tool. I want to check if this kind of operation that you have done in command line, can you do and create one tool with these operations you have done? For example, like ArcGIS, you create toolboxes with Python or in QGIS. Yeah, you can wrap all your commands Mm -hmm. in a new add-on, for example, in a module with, uh, with Python or even, with, or even in a script, and then you just call the script. And can you create a user interface tool for it? Yes, if you create a module, then it mm -hmm. automatically generates the user interface for that module. And you call it from command line or you add it to the GUI. Okay, if thank you remember, I showed in the beginning the structure uh, the grass script, you can take any grass script to define the parameters there, and once it is defined properly, the graphical interface is generated automatically. Okay, yeah. great. Thank so you. Anything you have there, that's for uh, convenience. Cool. Good. Any other? Okay. Then there's um, I added to the to the presentation some other very useful links. <laughs> so there's the, um, this temporal data processing data processing wiki with a, a lot of other examples of things that you can do. Um, I will I show you. So yeah, like general concepts first, and then all the things that we already saw, but with more explanations and some other uh, examples. <clears throat> then this one, I, I also did this one. This is like for time series in grass and R. Um, so how is the connection, how to export from grass, import in R, and do a gap filling in R and then reconstruct all the time series and import to grass. So the thing is, this example is for a small area. I don't know how it would work with the much bigger, but at least the, the, the workflow is there and it's possible to use it. <clears throat> and then some other temporal or grass and T grass uh, workshops that different developers have uh, presented. So there is, there is a lot of documentation that if you really want to learn, there's, there's now a lot of documentation about it. And also the mailing list, of course. <clears throat> and this temporal framework was uh, created by, uh, by Zuren Gebert and 
by Etzer as well. Okay, you were there, you were there. But those are the main uh, references uh, for all these, uh, these modules and the foundations of all of it. <clears throat> okay, and thank you for your attention. You can join and enjoy. <laughs>